Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and if you were new here, hi, hello, my name is Glow. So today I thought I'd talk about some of the things that happen when you have BPD that no one really mentions or talks about. But there are approximately like 300 maybe-ish different combinations of what BPD characteristics can express themselves as. So what I'm talking about is experiences that I have been through and that doesn't mean that everyone with BPD has been through it because just because you have borderline personality disorder doesn't mean it's the same as the next person who has it. There's a lot of characteristics which are the same, however experiences really do vary between people so don't take everything that I say here as gospel and think oh Larry down the road he's got this that and the other because he might not or she might not or they might not you know so yeah so this is what I think that people don't really talk about. One of the main things that I find with having BPD is that you get racing thoughts. Now I know a lot of people get racing thoughts, it's just natural, especially when you're stressed, just drop something, it's fine. <laughs> especially when you're stressed. However, what racing thoughts I'm talking about, it's constant. I'm currently on, well, however many, 25 milligrams of quetiapine, just one little tablet, uh, which is an antipsychotic, which helps me to not use my brain as much as I do. Uh, to describe it, race and thoughts, it would mean that some most people will have like a um, a bit of time in their head where they're just not really thinking about anything, there's like not much really going on up there. However, from my experience with having BPD, um, before I started taking quetiapine, is that I never wasn't thinking about something. And it could be the most randomest thing. It could be something serious. It could be something not serious. It could just be like making up little fantasy worlds and stories in my head. But there was never, never nothing going on. There was always something happening in my head. And it's exhausting, absolutely exhausting because you just can't switch off. Like, for example, most people get racing thoughts when they're trying to go to sleep. Not everyone, but most people, I think, do. When you're lying in bed and you're a bit anxious and your head's like, oh my God, what about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? Oh my God, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? That's what it is like constantly. But ever since I've started taking quetiapine, I've noticed that I actually have stages where I don't actually think about anything. And I'm like, this feels good. Like me and Beth, um, if one of us looks a bit like quiet or something, we'll be like, what are you thinking about? And I can honestly tell her, I've, I've told her a couple of times, like, literally not thinking about anything. Oh my God, it feels good to just not think about anything. I'm just going to put a little trigger warning here and I'll put a little timestamp here if you want to skip forward because this little section is going to be talking about suicide. And if you don't feel comfortable listening to that or talking about that, that's fine. If you just skip to this time, perfect. And then I'll see you in there. One thing that I find and have also been told by other borderlines that I've spoke to and associated with on the internet, uh, have said that we have um, thoughts all the time about suicide and death. And that doesn't necessarily mean that we, we are gonna go and do it or that we'd be happy if it happened. Um, from my experiences, I'm. it's just always on my mind. And I think Beth kind of, it's a bit like, are you okay? Because randomly out of nowhere, this comes back into the race and thoughts and whatnot. But I'd be like, could you just imagine if I just died, like, what would you do? And she's like, can you, can you not say that? And I'm like, okay. Or like something, I'd be like, could you imagine if this just happened like right now? And she's like, George, <laughs> what are you doing? Like, what are you talking about? But my mind's always constantly like picturing the worst and then now that I'm like kind of better, I just kind of make a joke out of it. So I'm just like, could you imagine? <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's just that's just a bit making light of it. But uh, yeah, I, I think a lot of borderlines live with the thought of wanting to die or waiting for it. And I don't think, for me anyway, it's it's not because we want to die. It's just that we feel so much and the emotions are so extreme and constant that you just want a break like oh I just am so tired of feeling like this like I don't want to die I have so much to live for but I feel like I want to die because I just need a break I'm just exhausted being left alone with your thoughts 
constantly is exhausting and it's mentally draining and it's it's just really horrible so if you notice one of your BPD friends kind of looking a bit down and and thinking a lot I, I'd suggest you check up on them because not many people do really and no one can really understand it unless they've been through it themselves but you checking up on someone saying are you okay yeah I'm fine and then ask them are you really okay are you sure do you want to talk about it and then see where it goes because sometimes you people just need a little bit of a push another thing I've noticed with my borderline personality disorder is that my eating patterns are severely unstable um not consciously I don't consciously do it but sometimes I'll eat everything in sight like I'm just so hungry I'll raid the fridge the cupboards the freezer eat it all but then there's other times where I'll I just don't eat anything I'll eat maybe a sandwich because you have to eat to live but I'm I don't feel hungry and it's nothing to do with body image or whatever it's my body you'll be like really 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 hungry no nah, I'm not hungry at all mate really hungry not hungry at all like there's no in between really um yeah and it's really hard as well like sometimes when I go out to eat because it's a nice thing to go out and eat but then I'm not really hungry because it's like pressure of going outside and eating especially like when I'm not in the mood for it it's it's just yeah now I think this one is quite prevalent throughout a lot of borderlines uh, just because of our upbringing as children so I have a need to be perfect all the time like if someone criticizes me or gives me constructive criticism I take it really hard um because growing up my abuser was like you need to do this you need to do that you need to do this you need to look like this you need to do this like if I didn't do an act or look or achieve certain things then I don't know it, it was kind of like I was less than I guess so all my life I've wanted to be perfect the perfect at everything and I feel like if I'm not perfect at something then I don't really want to do it because why would I want to do something that I'm just gonna fail at because I'm a failure and then everything's a failure and fail 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 when really it shouldn't be like that like that's not the case um just because you struggle and you fail at things I think you learn a lot more from your failures than you do from your successes but it's hard when you're a borderline because you know that you learn a lot from your like failures but then actually failing it's it's really soul destroying to be honest and it sounds so silly um but that's just how it is and I'm getting so much better at it but not great one of the good traits I think is found in a lot of borderlines is we are really perceptive people growing up we because most of us had abusive parents we had to assess situations really well so we'd have to assess the person's um body language their facial expressions and then like read the room as well and then if we're going somewhere else it's um looking out for any danger i think not everyone does this as i say with everything i'm saying not everyone does it but i think a few people with borderline do do this and might not even know that they do it but i'm really like i'm happy to have this trait because it's quite, it's really quite good i've saved my friends from creepy guys in the club and when i say creepy guys i mean like that frank looking ass guy from a uh, <laughs> what's it called shameless that was an awkward situation there was another situation where we were just going down the beach and i'm like on the lookout danger because it was nighttime I'm like do i see anyone and then i seen this couple and like I said to the girls I was with, I was like, they've just had sex. They've just been caught having sex. And they were like, how do you know that? And I'm like, just look at them. Look at the way they're walking and their body language. You can tell. And I was right because I went down the beach and then about 10 minutes later, I went round the corner just to look because it's like this cute little cave bit when we were in Portugal. And I got an eyeful of something I didn't want to get an eyeful of. However, it, it is a laugh and it is a good fun. And I think being perceptive it really helps you as a person 
and it can really help other people around you. And just because there's BPD traits that no one talks about doesn't mean they have to be negative because I love having this trait. Finally, this could just be one of mine or it could be a borderline thing. But I have found that with traumatic experiences in my life, even minor traumatic experiences, I put them into a little box and whoop, right to the back of my brain, I am not dealing with that, right? So I just, if there's something that I don't want to deal with because it, it just drains me mentally or it's just too much, I'm like, just, you know, not dealing with it. And so that's always fun when I go to therapy. Like that's when I found out that um, my dad actually abused me and neglected me as a child because I'm like, no, chuck that in the back, nothing there, didn't happen, didn't happen. And then when you start unboxing and picking apart all the trauma that you've packaged away and just chucked in that dark room in the back of your head and it's like, oof, I really do put my trauma away somewhere. Like, geez Louise. But it, <laughs> it's like finding out something about yourself that you completely forgot. And like, to be honest, I don't really remember much of my childhood before the age of about 10, 8, 10, because it just, it wasn't a good time to be a kid in my house. And, uh, well, I mean, don't get me wrong. My mom is amazing. Love her to pieces. She was always there for me and she's great. But, you know, negatives tend to outweigh the positives quite a bit. So... Yeah, so I don't really remember much of my childhood and I push a lot of trauma to the back of my head. Mm, I don't know if anyone else does this, but I'm, I'm assuming they do because that seems like like a normal thing to me, but normal things to me apparently aren't normal. Before making this video, I commented on a few BPD pages saying this is what I want to talk about uh, in terms of things that no one really mentions. Is there anything anyone would like me to discuss BPD wise? Because as I say, everyone's different. And there were a couple people who mentioned things that do apply to me as well that I never like really thought about in depth. Um, but I think that they're really relevant, so I'm going to include them. One suggestion that I received was being unable to distinguish between a good person and a bad person. So I thought about this and I thought, yeah, to be honest, I can relate to that because throughout my life, I have really given people the benefit of the doubt, especially in the last four years or so, because whilst I was undiagnosed and growing up, I was a very nasty person. Uh, not intentionally, I never intentionally wanted to hurt anyone or be nasty, but because my mood was so volatile, um, I would cause a lot of upset to people and say things that I didn't necessarily mean. So now I give people the benefit of the doubt, maybe a little too much, because someone will do something wrong and I'll be like, okay, well, maybe it's just this, maybe it's just that, justifying a lot of bad behaviour for people. And sometimes it's okay to do that because people do need the benefit of the doubt sometimes. Not everything is as bad as it seems. However, when you do that a lot, you kind of let these negative toxic people slip through the cracks because you can justify it away. And before you know it, you're locked in with this person and or people. And it's like, oh my goodness, how did I get here? Um, so I, I think that's really hard and trusting people we struggle with a lot but when we do learn to trust someone it's hard to take that trust back away I think because it, it's like you've invested time and energy and a lot of things into these people and to just turn around after that and be like oh my god you're a bad person it's it's really hard and it's something that I think you learn over time um, but you have to put the work into it and it, it's never just simple. Another suggestion that I received was not being able to relax, which then leads into people starting fights and arguments, like the BPD person starting fights and arguments. And I can certainly relate to this one as well, because when you have so high emotions, it's really hard to relax. You hardly find the time to relax at any point in the day. So you're always kind of up here, like on the tension wise, it's always like, mm -hmm. So on an evening when you are unable to sleep, maybe you might end up waking up your partner or friend or someone who is close by, specifically just to start an argument. Or you might, 
it might not even be on an evening. You might just be really restless. You might not have slept well for a few days. You might be just as you get and anyone says something it could be anything and you take that as an attack why are you attacking me uh, uh, and then you start an argument and then before you know it you you're in a full-blown row over absolutely nothing and it's like why am I doing this and for me personally I would get into an argument and potentially realize halfway through that I was wrong or that it's not even worth having this argument but my pride and stubbornness is like I'm going to win because, as I mentioned earlier, it's the need to be perfect. I can't lose this argument because I'm perfect. I can't be wrong, you know? And it's really toxic. For me personally, I've really struggled with having vivid dreams. Um, and I can have a, a really vivid dream about past trauma or just people that I don't really want to dream about or situations that really just make me uncomfortable and upset. And when I have these vivid dreams the next day or whenever I wake up, my whole mood is ruined and I'm ready to start a fight with anyone. Um, I've gotten a lot better at that now. I'll tell the people I'm with I've had like a really bad dream and it's really affected my mood. So, you know, kind of keep your distance kind of thing. Like you haven't done anything. This is me. But it is it's it's so easy to start an argument and it's even harder to rebuild up that relationship you may have had that you may have ruined because of this or if this continues to happen you may ruin it so I think really trying to control your emotions is a very valuable skill to learn and heaven knows I'm not saying oh you should do this because it is so hard I've worked for years to be where I am now and I know that people with BPD they're always trying so hard and it it's hard to see that they're trying sometimes but we are trying and we just want we just want the same as anyone else we just want to be happy and we don't want to do this it's just some sometimes it just takes over you bpd rage it's called i'll do a whole different video dedicated to that because i think it's something that really needs to be going on depth for it's it's just a feeling that if you were mentally sound or don't have a personality disorder or something you you couldn't understand it's literally like someone flips a switch and that's it it until the switch decides to flip again which could be minutes hours days but yeah it's it's really hard <laughs> So the next video I'll be uploading is titled Things I Learned in Psychotherapy, where I'll be discussing some techniques I've learned, some things I've learned about myself and just general things like that. Um, but after that, I've been keeping my videos quite vague because I don't want to upset anyone that I mention in the video um, and I don't want to make myself too vulnerable because I don't want anything used against me in terms of like a career or just people bullying me really um but I've spoke to a couple people and I've decided that I'm going to do some more in-depth videos and really get into the nitty gritty of it because I, th I think that's what needs to be done because it will I feel like my experiences will help people not to be up my own arse or anything but they do do you know like people's experiences help with other people and I really hope that I can help you or someone you know or whoever and if you feel like my videos can help you or someone else please 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 like subscribe comment uh click on the bell icon send it to a friend or a family member just just stick around because there's going to be a lot more borderline videos coming up soon if you're still here, thank you for sticking around and watching this video. As I said about two seconds ago, please like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and I will see you in my next upload, which I hope will be soon. Bye!